we are going to talk about solving absolute value equations. And the big thing to keep in mind here is what an absolute value is. So remember that the absolute value of a number is the distance from zero. And so, that, so if we're looking at this, if we want to know how, how many things are four away from zero, there's two things that are four away from zero. There's the absolute value of four, and there's the absolute value of negative four, meaning that we have this plus minus issue going on. So while this is a function, while the absolute value is a function, reversing the process is not. We end up with two answers instead of one. So the basic rule is, if I have the absolute value of some variable phrase, this is going to be equal, is equal to some number a, then x equals a, and x equals minus a. So the real key here is to know that you're always going to solve two equations. This is the fundamental piece of solving absolute values that's important. So let's look at a very, very, very straightforward example. Suppose I have the absolute value of x, equals 3. Well, this means x equals 3, or x equals minus 3. So my two answers are the set minus 3 and 3. And I'll accept it like this, or I'll accept it like this. Either is sufficient. Now to build a little bit more, if I have 2x minus 1, plus 3 equals 12. Now, I've got this absolute value expression, and I've got pieces outside of it. I need the pieces outside by themselves, so I'm going to subtract 3 first. And this will give me 2x minus 1 equals 9, absolute value. Since I have the absolute values, I now break this up as 2x minus 1 equals 9, and 2x minus 1 equals minus 9. I then add 1 to both sides of both equations, because notice most of the work's going to be the same. 2x equals 10 and 2x equals minus 8. We then divide by 2 and get x equals 5 and x equals minus 4. Now it's worth going back and checking, especially on these types of problems, is 2 times 5 minus 1 inside of absolute values plus 3 equal to 12. So 2 times 5 is 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. The absolute value of 9 is 9, and sure enough, 9 plus 3 is 12. Do the same thing with the minus 4, and we get 2 times minus 4 is minus 8. That's not a plus 1, it's a minus 1. Got to make sure we get our signs right. Minus 1 plus 3 equals 12. So minus 9 plus 3 equals 12. So 9 plus 3 equals 12. And sure enough, 9 plus 12 equals 12. So it works for both of our equations. Now one final point to make. Suppose that we have the absolute value of x plus 5 plus 7 equals 5. So again, we need to get the absolute value by itself, and we subtract 7 from both sides. So we get x plus 5 equals minus 2. Well, this looks straightforward enough. That just means x plus 5 equals minus 2, and x plus 5 equals 2. And in these cases, this is straightforward. We subtract 5 from both sides. And we get x equals minus 7, or we get x equals minus 3. Okay, everything looks great. Well, let's plug these in. So if I plug negative 7 in, negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 does not equal 5. And if we do the same thing with the negative 3, we'll see the same thing. And so we find out that both of our answers don't work. Since they don't work, we say there's no solution. And the earliest we could have spotted that was right here. Remember that an absolute value always returns a positive? That means it can never be negative. So if you see a negative by itself on the outside, then we can skip everything and start with the no solution.